I had a drone come in my window last night and um, try to kill me. Oh, you must be these people. Hello, viewer. <laughs> I was just working. Yeah? Yes. Well, and so that's why you're here. You're, you're here in our fair city working. Yes, that's true. I decided to take this week to work on my book. And what is the book? I mean, I know about your last book, Areas of My Expertise. Would you like some coffee? Do you want coffee, Asa? No, thank you. Anything else? Ham sandwich or anything? I can do without a ham sandwich. No ham sandwich. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I used to work in coffee shops. Did you? Sure. Coffee shops, bookstores, anywhere with a wireless connection. Obviously, that's all over now. Yeah. Now I come to a nice hotel and I wear a suit and work on my book. And, and you have fancy cookies even on a little Would ceramic Would you like plate. a cookie? I actually would. It's not going to happen. So how are you? I'm good. Good. Yeah. If there are two things you need to know, one is that writing a book does not involve going outside. The other point is that the real problem is the mole men. First of all, they're not like moles at all. They're not furry. They don't have starry noses. They're not round and fat and smushed and blind. Yeah. They can see, but only because they secrete a luminous mucus. A luminous mucus? Yeah, a mucus that is luminous. They were inspired by Queen Elizabeth. You know, the whole, the, the first. Yeah. Naturally. She was not a mole woman. She was a human. When the Mole Men befriended Thomas Jefferson, there was a lot of cross-cultural influence going on there. A lot of people thought he was a Mole Man. You know, he was very tall, had a very high, wispy voice. But he wasn't a Mole Man. He was just a Virginian gentleman planter, and really an aristocrat, until he met the Mole Men at Monticello, and they introduced him to the idea of revolution, basically. Bit of a pot smoker, too, as I understand it. Well, it's, oh, you're thinking of George Washington. Oh, OK. Um, but the, please don't do that. Monticello? begins with the same two letters as mole men. It's, it's uncanny when you think about it. Yeah. You know what Monticello means in Italian? No, John. Little Hill. So they are awful, ugly, hissing, dirty, weird creatures that had very beautiful, inspiring ideas. And they were also very mucusy. And what you're telling me is that these mucus-secreting creatures are really part of the very fabric of our nation. They're part of the very fabric of, of the Republican they're part, they're part of the terra firma, quasi-literally. The Mole Men never preached, as our founding fathers did not preach, a pure democracy in the Athenian sense. I mean, as I say, I, I, had, I had talked about the Mole Men just very briefly in the original book. Yeah. And I felt adept to my readers to explain what I was talking about. mole men fit into the whole span of evolution. Aristotle believed that the mole men were spontaneously generated. Uh, no one knows for certain whether they are a distinct breed or another. They're hard to catch. The mole men are men and women. The term, by the way, is you don't say mole woman, you say mole manic woman. Mole manic woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure exactly why. You know who Dick Van Patten is, don't I you? I sure do. Certainly you know, viewer. Former star of Eight is Enough. And also is in Soylent Green. Which is made of people. Nice, you just ruined it. Hi, this is John Hodgman in room 33. How are you? Yeah. Could we get a copy of Soylent Green, some Soylent Green, and some kimchi, please, as soon as possible? Ham sandwich? Yes. And ham sandwich is done. Yes, soil and green. And some soil and red if you can get it. Soil and green is made of people. Goodbye. Is, is there a title um, for this new book? It's More Information Than You Require. And then there'll be a third book called That Is All. You know, my regret with the first book was that it did not lead people to worry that I was insane. What's yeah. that book on your bed? Well, that's The People's Almanac number two. Uh -huh. My first book was very much inspired by The People's Almanac. It seems only natural that my second book should be inspired by The People's Almanac number two. This is the thermostat. I have it set precisely at 76 degrees for obvious reasons. This uh, elephant is kind of a skeleton. 
Yeah. I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. Let's leave it at that. With the Mullman, you know, it was nice enough just to explore their history, but then, you know, you naturally, you got to come up with 700 Mullman names. A typical one would be Alistair Strongclaws, Samuel Mossyface, Sir Stinson Maggot Wrangler, John Dirtfellow. What kind of work do uh, mole men and molemanic women and molemanic uh, persons some of them do? Are slime layers, fang mongers, uh, UO socialists, um, but many, many of them, of course, are declarationists. They were just amazing at writing declarations of independence. Mm -hmm. This is the magic of writing. This is how it gets really exciting. Yes. You may have noticed Nick Nolte on the list. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know he was a mole man. Yeah, no, neither did I until just recently. Yeah, yeah. How, how did you discover that? Let's sit down again. You know, when I look up in the ceiling here in your room, John, there are these sort of Moroccan ornamental grates. I almost imagine mole men crawling through them, whispering their secrets to you at the night. Well, that would be crazy. If it were just the two of us talking, it would be frankly much more enjoyable. But yeah. this makes it magic somehow. I know that you have a book to write, and we don't want to uh, consume too much of your time, but I, I well, wonder I if... it's too late for that. I had a drone come in my window last night yeah. and um, try to kill me. But I had to stay very still so that it... because it detects motion. You read the book Dune? No. Yeah, look it up. That's a true celebrity moment with John Hodgman, minor television personality. And you can watch this featurette occasionally on your Boing Boing TV. I'll come back and tell you another true celebrity encounter, but I won't tell you when it'll happen or if it'll ever happen again. The only way you can know for sure is if you watch Boing Boing TV the way I do, which is to say religiously in a shrine. How's that for your promo? My name is John Hodgman. I'm the author of a book called The Areas of My Expertise. I'm known for doing some other things as well. Look it up on the internet. While you're using the internet, why don't you dial on up Boing Boing TV? It's like TV, but it's on the internet. Boing Boing TV. It's just like Boing Boing, but for people who can't read.